So if you had to tell your friends what this uh, company is doing in 60 seconds, what would you tell them? Well, I would tell them that we're building at best, I, I could explain it as a community program operating system, right? So there's a, there's a marketplace of programs out there that are looking for what they call eligible households, people that fit a particular income criteria. And the government is trying to get them resources, whether they be affordable housing, um, lending, education resources. And so you, you sort of have this information asymmetry between the people that are looking for resources like affordable housing and education and the government trying to find eligible households to apply for those programs and make the best use of those programs. So you have this sort of disconnect between these two parties. And that's really what House Keys is trying to build both a marketing place and an operating system to be able to, to bring these two parties together. Where does artificial intelligence play a role? Artificial intelligence is really throughout the entire process. When I think about uh, the first part of it, which is if I'm the person in that homeowner scenario asking what opportunities are out there for me, recommendation engines are right off the bat, right? Instead of me going and searching uh, through web pages and websites to try to understand what's out there, and the recommendation engine would use my information to tell me what's most suitable for my situation. The other part of it is when you go through this process of determining eligibility, it's underwriting. And, you know, a lot of experts will tell you that the native industry for AI or machine learning is insurance because you've got a lot of underwriting, probability, pricing, all of that's incorporated insurance. I would go a step further and say the native industry for machine learning and AI is underwriting because mortgage underwriting, insurance underwriting, program eligibility underwriting, what they all share is this need to use information to determine probability, to determine optimization, to determine classification. So you've got a lot of aspects of the underwriting process that utilizes a lot of what machine learning can bring to a workflow. Um, natural language processing is a major part of what we're doing. Every single one of these programs that I'm talking to you about involve a lot of legal documentation. From the time a government creates the program and the legislation around the program creation to anything from land use policy to how developers actually have to sign affordable housing agreements to produce the housing. And then you have the restriction agreement that a person signs with a bunch of legalese to be able to involve themselves in the program. Why? you're pursuing this now uh, at this time and age what has changed in the technology if you like that allows you to pursue this would you have done it five years ago or ten years ago no i think what really had to happen was a combination of the data economy had to get to where it is now i think the open data movement has allowed a lot of people to provide data a lot of government data is available that wasn't available before i think a lot more data providers have apis that allow for sync integration so you can bring more data into your space to be able to be analyzed. I think the cost of storage has gone tremendously, a lot lower over the over the, the past decade, just over the last few, few years. And the cost of processing power has gone way down. Uh, when, when you look at services like AWS and Azure and, and all these different uh, service providers, so you have a lot more machine capability, you have a lot more data and a, and a much more efficient data economy and then you have really more coding tools that are available to you to be able to take advantage of you know what what, what would have been in, the, in our platform now you've got really great stuff being developed in python and so i think when you're when you're looking at the evolution of what you can do with code what's happened with data and the availability of data and what's happened with processing power i think we're just different space than we were even five years ago.